I, I think it's as simple as like you, you're not that interested in seeing stories told by film executives. <laughs> The drinking lamp has been lit. Well, I've got myself a nice Jack Daniels. You've got yourself some tequila. I had some had some tequila. I had some in the past tense. It's gone now. Mm. It's warming my innards. Nice. Woo. Yeah, baby. That's good. Well, um, in this episode, uh, well, it's it's split into two things. One is later we'll, we'll have a quick chat. I've got an, an interview with um, Dominic Hellstone. Uh, but I wanted to first chat about um, cap plastic and spe- specifically how it is applied to the surface of a mold because there's lots of different ways it can be done. And this was prompted from a post I saw on the 911 asking about um, how to apply it to molds. And obviously some people say you can airbrush it and that's I think that's the best way. Some people, yeah, but I haven't got an airbrush so I can just use a brush. And yes, you can use a brush. Or you can, you can use it, a sponge. Or sponge it, but they're all different ways of doing it, but they're going to give you different results. I personally think you'll get a, the best result with an airbrush. Mm-hmm. And so I thought it'd be quite nice to demonstrate clearly why I think an airbrush is better than painting on with a brush. So I made a video. I've gotten really good that. results with uh, the Preval sprayers, these little glass jars. You can buy them at um, Home Depot and Lowe's. You know, most mm-hmm. big box hardware stores will carry them, or you can buy them online. And they have refillable or, or you know replaceable charged aerosol tops that fit on the jars so okay. it's basically you are turning whatever liquid you want to use into a spray that's really handy and convenient yeah. as well if you're sort of yeah, they're pretty they're pretty inexpensive you don't doesn't require having a, an air compressor though okay, i suspect because cool. it's it's a, it's an aerosol nozzle you may have to really thin the cap plastic even beyond, you know, like six or eight parts acetone to one part cap plastic mm-hmm. just to prevent it from clogging. But I've gotten really good results from it in the past. I've, I even, think be good. I've even used it to run, uh, put prosade through when I'm doing um, tattoo transfers. Oh, I guess that will work too. Yeah. You just got to, I guess once you're done, you have to dump out the stuff and then flush it through with some clean solvent just to yeah. make sure that nozzle is completely clean. But uh, exactly. that, that's good. That saves you the hassle of having to have an airbrush compressor if you don't happen to have one. But um, I think it's um, it's worth having. But anyway, I thought it'd be nice to show, you know, side by side exactly why. So that video is done. That's up on the website or up on the on YouTube. I will link it into the blog post for this episode. I'll, I'll add um, links to it and everything. And I'll um, do pump spray and the Preval sprayers this weekend so we can have a good, com- good side-by-side comparison of everything. Yeah. And show how it all works. Cause it's one of those things where you, there's lots of different ways of doing it, but the devil's in the detail and it's quite nice to show, you know, in clear detail, close up of why one is better than the other. And then if you want the better result, this is what you're going to have to have and all that kind of stuff. So yay, that's cool. So chatting with Dominic Hailstone. So if you're not familiar with Dominic, I don't know if you've seen his stuff around, but I've known about him for a long, long time. And if you um, don't know him, look him up. He's he's somebody who's going to impress the snot out of you. Yes, he's very good. He reminds me, I mean, it's weird. There's a few guys. There's there's Dominic Hailstone. There's uh, Chris Cunningham um, and <clears throat> another guy called Paul Catlin. And they all seem to be cut from the same kind of cloth. And they're very um, imaginative creative people who started out doing prosthetic stuff i mean dominic is the same he started out doing prosthetics and he still you know dabbles with that kind of stuff but he moved on to sort of more digital stuff very early on though he did a lot of after effects stuff a long time ago and i would recommend you look up his website dominichailstone.com and you'll see links there one of, and there's the videos that he's done the, the video i think you should check out first if you're not familiar with his stuff is a video called the eel and, and it's just like a short, but he's done a lot of like music videos and he's done a, mm-hmm. a lot of cool stuff with really interesting artists and things. And um, uh, yeah, you should definitely have a look because it's, it's an interesting one because he's very, um, I think he's, he's well enough versed in the, 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 the mechanical skills of how to produce something physically. And he understands the digital side of things well enough 
that there is an interesting thing that happens in that the the process of how it's done doesn't really take center stage in the effect whereas a lot of people i don't know if you agree when you see people that sort of recently learned something or they've they've got a new toy they seem to feature it in a way that you can tell that they're pleased that they've got this capability whereas his stuff yeah. is very much like uh, a lot of it's sort of body horror stuff it's quite sort of upsetting or shocking deformities and strangeness about the face but it's done in a way where you're not quite sure what you're looking at whether it's real or is it digital or oh, maybe more, more about strange. the destination than the journey or, or more yes. about the destination than or the journey than the destination yeah yeah the, the mechanism of it isn't isn't obvious and it's really interesting so we had a good chat comparing um things like we, we spoke about like the how the, the the management side of things you know the people that are paying for a production can kind of get involved and, and they can meddle with stuff you know they can mess around uh. with design choices and things and i understand in the grown-up world that you know if the people are paying for it they have a right to intervene or to be involved but i've seen you know with my own eyes like people that the, the head cock you know the head goes to an angle and you know someone's having an idea and um it's quite funny that um designers creature designers they'll put things in the design when it first gets viewed that are obviously wrong or obviously that they don't like in order to be basically like a kind of a distraction it's kind of like throwing a stake down for a guard dog they'll put it down knowing that this sap is going to go oh i don't like this or let's move this to here to there oh go, i have oh, been there great. so many times <laughs> but but <laughs> but the the sad truth of it is that when you do something like that you know, throw something in that you, oh, this, this design is shit. That's, I, I don't, don't even want to, you know, I don't want to take any credit for this design because it's that bad. That's the stuff that the clients usually go for. It's a weird one, isn't it? It it's is really bizarre. Weird. It's happened consistently. I remember seeing some of the things, um, I think on the first or second, I can't remember, one of the very early, um, um resident evil movies and there was a whole bunch of really cool stuff that animated extras had done that just got rejected and i was like but they were brilliant they were really 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 nice designs but again it's just one of those things where the the people involved they're a committee and you've heard that expression uh a camel is a horse designed by a committee or some it's a word to yeah. effect and it's just like a group of people <clears throat> thinking it becomes a homogenized anodyne safe kind of polished sort of sketch of what could be really good yeah, uh, I've, 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 I've i encountered that quite a bit um, in my early days in los angeles uh working for a production company that did a lot of work with japanese companies where we did did, did a lot of work with honda motorcycles uh infinity isuzu nissan uh and the Japanese have a tendency to make all of their decisions by committee. Nobody's willing to step in and take responsibility solely because if they are wrong, they lose face. And right. it's a very real concept that, you know, if you say on a deadline, if you say, yeah, we'll, we'll have the, the final sketches to you by noon tomorrow. And if they don't get there until one thirty. Oh man, <laughs> that's, that's bad because you okay. said it would be there at noon and now everybody's lost face and it's just a clusterfuck. Right. So I, I guess that can produce yeah, good you gotta, things though. You got to understand, well, it's, it's, it's a matter because of then under, everyone works really hard understanding, to make sure understanding cultural differences so that you don't make a faux pas unintentionally because of of cultural differences uh, know know what the rules are when, before you start yeah. playing the game well i wanted to compare the um, the notion of like you know um the suits getting involved because uh, everyone you know all the the suits are the guys that you know they're, they're rolling with their money and everything and so obviously you got to appeal to those but i want to reflect back to um uh the don lanning chats that we had where he was very accommodating to those people and he had well he's just such a he's such work. a sweet sweet man Yes, but he but he also uh, completely accepts that it's their money and their job. So he actually has a very healthy relationship with those changes, I think, which is quite yeah. a good thing. Um, so that's yeah, well, that's that's something as artists, I think it's it's a, a good good advice to to take and something that we should all kind of take to heart because 
you know, one, as artists, it's difficult for us not to take things personally, even if mm -hmm. we're doing something that is somebody else's design. It's because we're still putting something of ourselves into it, even if it doesn't belong to us. Yeah. And when you're doing work for a client to their specifications, it might not be something that you care about particularly, but you still have to do the absolute best you can at creating what they want. Mm. And if criticism comes back, learning how to not take it personally and being offended by somebody saying that they don't like something, if they can, you know, I know uh, suits can be quite harsh when it comes to criticism because yeah. they don't, they don't have the, the vested interest in it that you do, you know, how many hours you've put into rendering this illustration or sculpting something and they come well, in and say, nah, change this. Yeah. Well, the thing is about the suit thing, I think it's, it, it was, it was, it's always been necessary because to produce anything of any significance required such a team of people that you had to have those things in place. But you look at something like the eel, for example, it's not, you know, it's not the, the, the canon that is Harry Potter. So it's not a big thing like that. But the eel, as far as I'm aware, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dom, but that's pretty much all Dom's work. It's pretty much him. I think he got a few people to help out here and there, but pretty much that's just him. So he didn't need to check with anyone or get people's permission or run anything by somebody. Mm -hmm. So I think what I would take from this is that the capacity that we have now with the cost of cameras, the cost of software, um, what one person is capable of producing now is so significant that it, it doesn't need to be a, a 90 minute feature with, you know, options to be on Netflix and all oh, that kind of sure. Thing. You can produce a small, a, a 30 second thing with a really good idea and actually do some pretty decent stuff. So I think what I get from this is, is what, what kind of done, Don's attitude is, is, is to be responsible for more than just the effect. Don't, ju don't just think of yourself in terms of being um, an available pair of hands to fit into an existing pipeline. That's a way. And that was always the only way, but also you could produce your own things entirely. You could, you could branch into other areas. You could write it, for example, you could sure. design, it. you could do the digital effects in whatever capacity you can, you can make the practical elements. You could do all of it. It might take you longer and it might cost you a bit more time and money, but you could do something complete and own, own it rather than only be, you know, a sculptor or a mold maker. And then if there's nothing available, if there's no molds being made or no sculpting to be done, then you have no work at all because that's what you've decided to limit your contribution to. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like him for that. And I think that's probably where that kind of disdain comes from, because to some degree he does have an understanding either side of just their involvement to say no, because they've never watched a horror movie in their life and they don't know what scary is. They just, Oh yeah. Well, it's, it's great when you have the luxury of time to be able to do, to wear all of the hats on a production and do everything exactly the way you want it to be done. Mm. Um, the flip side of that coin is I've had students who wanted to do everything themselves for their final, final demo reel project. And they don't have the time to do everything. And you know, they're basically reinventing the wheel because they, they want to model this object from scratch themselves. When you can probably find a hundred variations of the exact same thing already done to near perfection by other artists that's available for download at any number of, of uh, sites that, that cater to that kind of stuff. Mm. So it's, yeah, it's, I, I admire the, the desire to want to do everything yourselves, but sometimes you just aren't afforded that the luxury to be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's working smarter rather than just harder, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because then it becomes more about control rather than about, um, wanting to do something properly. Cause I can, th th I think that's the difference. If you've got a very clear idea in your head about what you want to do and to involve other people is possibly going to limit that, then that's a good thing. But if you're controlling everything because you just can't let anyone else in, because that's just how you're wired, that equally is not good in a different yeah. way. It took me quite a while to learn how to delegate. 
Yes, I can imagine. Yeah, it is weird because if you if you sort of measure your worth on what you're capable of doing all the time, then you only think that's the only thing you can do. And especially as you get older, you start realizing you can delegate and you can mm-hmm. give somebody else. And maybe maybe the things you can't afford to do or you haven't got the time to do could be somebody else's career, you know. And and actually, that's 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 how any of us have gotten work, isn't it? It's because you know the boss can't do everything, so they have to get people in, and that's those little things that they can't do become our lives. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, you know, when you're, when you're basically um, a one man operation, most of the time, as you and I both are, mm. you know, it's when by necessity, we need to do everything ourselves. Yeah. Or certainly that has been, it's been that way in the past. Now when things come along that, you know, I, I will say yes to projects that I know I can hire somebody who has the skill set to do part of the job that I don't have mm-hmm. and it, and it will be, and it'll be fine. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's all and good, isn't it? Because if you had something to do that you couldn't possibly do, um, then you wouldn't think twice about getting somebody in. But if it's something you sort of have an idea about, then you kind of like, oh, I kind of know. But like mm-hmm. you say, the job is such that you can't do all of those things in the time. So you have to delegate. Absolutely. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Yeah, so we had a chat about that and we had a chat about the struggle between the old and the new. And I think again, knowing new technology, which I know just the phrase new technology sounds like an old man expression, but just, just you know, when things have been done old school, um, and that's what you're invested in fully. Uh, you know, there are there are new things to be done, and it's. I think if you know both, you can kind of elect which is the right one, or you can draw both together. Mm-hmm. And that was interesting that Dom had done stuff like you know he would do some things practically, some things digitally, and combine them and be very fluent in both because he's familiar with both, rather than not doing one or the other because he's not familiar with them. Um, so that would be an interesting one. And the other thing that he said that was really uh quite significant for me is he kind of asked the question you know what is special now what is significant because things that are on the internet like you know a lot of zoom meetings and that kind of stuff so much of it's insubstantial you can't grab a hold of it so i remember watching um jurassic park you know when it came out of the cinema i went by myself because i really wanted to be completely immersed in it not talk to anybody and the same with t2 and when i watched jurassic park it was just like it was pure magic to me because yeah. obviously we knew that this was a digital thing and a lot of noise had been made in the papers about this and it was there was a big fanfare coming out. And I remember seeing it and thinking, well, even today that T-Rex sequence stands up, you know, when it's it's chasing after the truck and everything. It's amazing. Yeah. But you know what, you know, you know, it, it comes back to what you and Dominic were talking about is it's such a beautiful blend of practical and digital mm that makes that sequence work. It is. And it was, it was, it was the vanguard of stuff because that was, that was new. I mean, you had like Phil Tippett on board and you know, he was not a digital guy then. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's since become more so, but, but it's like, we were discovering this, you know, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a a generation for the first time when this kind of came out and we were like, fuck, this is serious. This could make a big difference. And everyone was like, that's it. I think that's when seeing, seeing Jurassic park was the first time people made people realize they're going to be able to replace actors someday. Yeah. (laughs) And sometimes that's a good thing, (laughs) (laughs) but but it's more the case of, of of making a separation between people that use computers and people that don't. And I think it's a big mistake to think that there are digital people and there are practical people and never the twain shall meet. I don't believe that. I think. No, no, I don't either. It's down to, it's down to mainly practical people learning uh, the digital side of things and incorporating that into their world in whatever they, in, in whatever way they want to. Um, and I think those ranks are growing quite there's ranks of growing you get this kind of hybrid artists which is a new expression i read about in the prosthetics magazine i heard or thought about that as a thing but also i don't think you you know you don't have to choose one or the other but also it's a case of using the digital things in your world so it's about incorporating those things into very practical um uses like i have done like um i've got like a weird desk surround at the moment and i need to build a where my airbrush goes 
the airbrush clamp fits, you know, a normal horizontal bench. Well, I'd like one that fits it at this particular angle. Um, so I thought, oh, I just throw that up on, um, you know, fusion 360 and I'll be able to print those bits off. And I kind of caught myself thinking, holy shit, two years ago, I would have lost my mind. That, that yeah. was even possibility. But now I'm like, well, I'll just take the clamp from this. I'll just measure this and I'll just make something. And it's like, that's how it works. It, you start building it into how you do things because it stops being a thing you don't know about. And instead you start going, oh, I'm, I, I know about this stuff so I can do it. Um, so I think that's the thing. It's like having a, having a, a vision about what you want and then using what you know to get that um, that vision to reality and there's nothing wrong with knowing about more tools it's not about practical or digital it's just about no, and, and Kazu you know, is like doing it now with pr 3d printed molds and rod maxwell is doing it with 3d printed molds and scanned uh, scanned life casts or is or scans instead of life casting yes and doing it so it's you know it's, it's neat to see how the industry is evolving since how since 3d printing has become much more available and, and common there. I mean, it's been around for quite a few years, but it's yeah. only been in the last handful of years that it's taken on this, this new life. Yeah. But it's, it's interesting because those things exist. Like, you know, you can get ZBrush core mini for free and, you know, um, F Fusion 360 is free if you're not commercial commercially mm -hmm. using it. Printers are cheap. Um, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to extend yourself and work hard in order to be able to use those things. You still have to put the hours in and it's still going to be a case that the people that are familiar with those things will use them most efficiently and 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 the cheaper those things become and the easier they are to use it kind of feels like people go oh i don't really need to work hard at being competent with them because they're cheap and it's like no you you do <laughs> yeah <I love laughs> you know, it's, it's still how you, how do you use them and that's what i liked about um you still got to do the work there's still effort in oh absolutely I, I, I had not... i used to i used to have animation students who you know college age kids, you know, 19, 20, 21 years old who drew a lot, drew like four or five year olds. Mm. And I said, why are you in an animation program that requires all of this drawing and you, you suck at this and f are firmly convinced that they don't need to draw because the computer will be able to do everything for them. Hey, we just got an in and out burger. I'll just up, yeah, just up the road. One, it's just it's about a mile from the house, and it opened up um, not quite a, a month ago, maybe maybe three weeks ago. Do you have like and the lines that they have in California? Oh, they're freaking the the day they opened, there were lines all the way around the shopping mall. We went to In and Out Burger. Do you remember yeah. we went and and IMAX and we went? Oh yeah, it was it was like two o'clock in the morning. morning. <laughs> It was like Breaking Bad in there. It was mental. Oh, it was really yeah. funny. Yeah. And, but that was, their, oh, their hamburgers are amazing. Yeah. But yes, I take your point. But they you still, point. You're, yeah. you're basically saying, yeah, you know, that, that, that you still need to put the work no, in. No, you got to do the yeah, work. You got to do the work. And I think this is the thing. I think these things come across with a promise of, of, of labor saving or, 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 or an efficiency, which would somehow remove your- To a your, degree remove your requirement to put the effort in. But I think the thing is you are going to be required to work 110% and really push yourself regardless of the tools available. Do you know what I mean? If you, mm -hmm. and, 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 and yeah. anyone, anyone that's succeeding and doing well is doing that, I think. Yeah. And, I, and if you don't, if you don't have the proper skills, good software is only going to get you shitty results faster. That's right. You can do a shit job with good tools. Totally. You can. Yeah, you, know, you can you can do a lot of damage with just a little bit of knowledge about the software. Yeah, so yeah, I, I think it's interesting to have an idea, and this is why when I've been learning things like ZBrush and stuff, for me it's been about uh, it's project based. It's like I'll think of something I want to make, mm -hmm. and I go through it from start to finish, and along that journey I found oh this is hard, that's hard, um, because you've got a specific thing. Whereas if you just try and learn the software, it is literally like 
learning the alphabet and thinking, right, now I know the alphabet, I can be a writer. And it's like, well, no, because, you know, are you going to be writing technical manuals on how to repair an engine? Or are you going to be writing poems? Or are you going to be writing, you know, uh, safety instruction flight data sheets or something? You know, there's so many things you could do with the same letters. It's not about just knowing the tools. It's like actually now, obviously the bare minimum is knowing the tools. Now you've actually got to bring something to the party. It's like, what is it you want to say? I want to tell a story about a vampire. Or I've got this idea about this thing. And then you pull on those tools to tell that story or to convey that idea, but you've got to come with it. You can't just sign up to a class, learn this, the techniques and then go, right, now I'm good to go. It's like, yeah, but you and 10,000 other people know exactly the same techniques. It's like we've mentioned. I've always wanted I've always wanted to do fortune cookie fortunes. <laughs> I'd be interested to know what they I look do like. do really, really weird ones. <laughs> or conflicting ones in the same kind of like alternate. So people have, you know, that their impacts are full and they're designed to be conflicting for people that are, you know, at a, at a table, you could cause an argument by, by carefully crafted <laughs> statements. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 um, yeah, the, the the materials and the and the techniques don't do it for you. You've actually got to put the hours in. And um, anyway, that that we kind of touched on a bit of that with uh, with with, with ch the the chat with Dom. Um, we mentioned a few different people as well, and I I again I'm going to put the links to their um, pages and things on the show notes. There was a uh, Beeple Crap. Uh, have you seen Beeple Crap stuff? He's on Instagram and he's done these really cool uh, digital renderings. Sure. He's obviously so. somebody that's very familiar with digital uh, stuff, and he has a lot of like Kim Jong Un and 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 Donald Trump and 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 very weird and Disney and and big things that are in the oh, news. maybe yeah maybe I yeah have, things yeah. that are in the news. He's done like these little animations. Sounds familiar, um, but really cool, like like rendered kind of like seeing like Mickey Mouse, and you know he's got like a, tubes coming out of his tits, and he's like feeding kids, and it's <laughs> weird like little allegorical <laughs> weird stories and, and things but um but uh, we mentioned uh, he mentions him and again he does the same kind of thing that spitting image did which was to make very sort of poignant um uh or, that's a poignant but but you know political commentary oh, very um very current political commentary using a very sort of high level of skill and it, biting the satire uh, yeah biting satire but look but 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 but, but something that looks like it would have taken days to do but he's obviously banged it out pretty quick to respond to something that was in the news very recently. And um, it's, it's really nice to see that kind of stuff done. And that's the kind of thing I mean, it's like, it's, it's not just good enough for him to produce, you know, rendered things. They are rendered things in response to current events. And that's what's nice about it. And it's kind of like, it's having that kind of angle where you, you know, do you know what I mean? Where you, you, you mm -hmm. actually have something to say and you're using the, the, the techniques and your skills to say them rather than just say, right, I now know the alphabet. So I'm going to spend my life writing the alphabet beautifully and expecting to be cheered for it. It's like, well, no, we, we know that. I What's one of the things I like about the, the, the TV show South Park, <laughs> be, besides the fact that it's just funny as fuck, um, they got a library of, of models because they use Maya to, to animate everything so they have a library of all of these characters so that they can be uh up to date with current events and bang out an episode in from from start to air six days because they've got this library of everything that they can just plug and play it's interesting isn't it because that that that, that ability to be responsive is quite important nowadays it's like you can have a good thing to, to tell or a good story to tell, but it's like, if you can tell it whilst it's still taking place, it, it, it's more relevant. And it's, it's more likely to be consumed, but then by the same token, it also means it's going to, it's got a shelf life as well. It'll kind of move on. We'll move on from that. We'll enjoy something at the, at the moment. Like I know South Park recently did a, a lockdown coronavirus episode i didn't see it but i heard that it came out i haven't seen it um you know and it's the kind of thing that in 10 years from now maybe won't be that poignant <laughs> but 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 the, the point is it's kind of throwaway isn't it you you have the ability to do mm -hmm. this is it doesn't have to be like a disney movie now where it takes years to produce and you know it's great and we all clap and cheer and it's a, you know it has a timeless kind of quality like like i don't know beauty and the beast or something where you, 
but um but yeah now it's a bit well the strength of south park is not not in the animation no, no. i think it's it's in the it's in the writing <laughs> yeah it's just a way of getting something across quite so, yeah, there's a bit of a stretch to compare those two disney and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i do like an episode of south park is true but it also to they they are wonderful artists if they wanted to i think they did an episode it was years ago where uh the Kenny and and Kyle and and uh, Cartman and they were all playing doing some kind of um, anime warrior thing, and in their heads, it was that's what they looked like, and they animated some of those segments dead on like some of the anime cartoons yeah. that are on the air. So you know, they have the talent. They have just chosen to do South Park like very simple 2d animation but you know um matt and trey were both very still are very talented animators they they worked at a at an animation studio where i did some work uh, we never crossed paths because they had already left by the time we were doing some some freelance work for them but they know how to draw yeah. they just have they just have chosen to do what they yeah. do. Well, they've got these hot takes. Like Picasso, it's like Picasso was a hell of an, you know, a phenomenal illustrator, but he just chose abstract expressionism as his as his medium. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's the thing is it's, it's having something to say. It's like when you look at the, you know, this Roger Law stuff. He was he was a caricaturist and an artist, and you know that that kind of stuff led to spitting image it was all about being responsive and using the things you know how to do your creative talents you know in order to 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 to, to spin out a, 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 your version of events i guess in direct response to something that was that was a current event that was taking place and that's a good thing because you're expressing yourself and you're 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 telling your side but in a, in a funny or engaging way I guess music does that too. You know, you get, especially with like mm -hmm. hip hop and stuff, you know, it was all very, you know, born out of the events that were taking place. And that's why you'd get that kind of stuff. But yeah, it was a really interesting chat, really interesting chat. So anyway, I, I guess I should just stop uh, wanking on about this. and just <laughs> <laughs> let you listen to and, the magic. And take a, li take a listen to Dominic Hailstone. It's tough. How about you being keeping busy? I'm really busy. Um, Lots of jobs got cancelled or or put on hold, mm -hmm. um, but I've been working on on my own things. Really, I've been doing a lot of writing, oh cool, and, um, which has been a lot of fun, and a lot of sculpture, and you know, just uh, kind of looking to sell things on my website and all of that. Okay, so yeah, yeah. You... So it's it's mainly just been doing the stuff I've wanted to do for the last two years. Oh, that's you know? cool. Have you so yeah. you, do you do stuff for fun still, or do you only do things for jobs? Really. So whenever I see a sketch or something you've done is that like an nda safe little reveal or is it just you just sit there doodling <laughs> on the loo you're like i just want to you know sculpt the dolls draw this thing um it's usually yeah it's usually a kind of combination of like uh, you know i'm not sure what nda safe means anymore but it's usually <laughs> either things that um you know i worked on a few years ago um or it's it's mainly my own stuff all, all the doodles and procreate stuff is just that's usually me at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you know, just blowing off steam sitting. Yeah. Just sitting on, you know, watching, you know, goggle box or whatever, you know, <laughs> you know? Um, and, um, yeah, yeah. That's usually just that. Um, but my, as for my own stuff, like, I mean, I do do my own stuff whenever possible. Mm -hmm. I work on my own stuff whenever possible. And, and this is enabled, you know, uh, yeah, the, yeah. The virus has enabled me to do all of that, so I'm I'm kind of quite grateful for that. That's yeah. cool. I mean, do you when you when you're doing your own stuff, do you find it easy to do things yourself, or do you need that kind of push of deadlines to get stuff done? Or are you somebody that will just do stuff anyway, regardless of of an extra? Yeah, I'll pressure? do I'll do stuff anyway. Um, I've I feel terribly guilty about everything that I do that I'm not working hard enough. So I don't I don't need anyone on my back telling me you know like i mean one of the things i hate actually do in jobs is is when people feel that they need to motivate me mm. you know <laughs> do you know what i mean like yeah. <laughs> if, if if management starts doing tricks like oh, this will get them to work hard and faster and then they usually yeah that usually doesn't work very well yeah um 
I'm sure you might have the same. <laughs> Similar. It's weird, actually, because yeah. I had I had a call about something um, uh, the other day about uh, a little job, and they were sort of they 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 covered it with from a really weird like oh this is how long you know we set aside a couple of days for something. And you kind of go, well, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say it's going to take. I don't know because we haven't talked about it yet, but it's weird how people will, will hire you on the basis of they like something you do, and then as soon as they've kind of got you to do something, they'll insist on how you do it, and you kind of go. I'm not being yeah. funny, but if you like what I do, you should let me just do it the way I'm going to do it. And I'm not talking about an extreme, like, you just suck it up. This is the, my process and you must do this. I just mean, like, yeah, yeah, you know, if it yeah. takes me a couple of days, to, I just, I won't get back to you for a week. So I just need to think about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it's like, that's what, that's how it works. And and if, if that's not how you want to do it, it's kind of, well, then I don't really feel like I should do it. Because the reason I think the way I do things the way I do them is because it feels right to me. And if you fuck with that process, then yeah. you're kind of getting in the way of what it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of that now from upper management because they don't have anything else to do, you know. So, mm. you know, it is. It's like the more the more control that they have, and they do now have ultimate control. The more they feel that they have to do something. So, like you, you know, it's always been kind of bad or good depending on who you're working for. But um, now I've seen it, as you say, where they literally say, you know, they're like they'll literally say okay so you're going to do a couple of thumbnail sketches right and then get back to us and you know i've had to say like well no because if i do thumbnail sketches you'll have wasted your money you know mm. um you know i can do you kind of fully rendered things now you know that's that's the beauty of you know cg or or working in the computers you can actually get designs that aren't thumbnail sketches so you, you know you get people who are wanting to direct you as to how your time should be used i think that's what you're talking mm. about isn't it you know when the people are like yeah you know they, they they're kind of like here's the process and this is the process we want you to do and you're like yes i'm very well aware of the process i've been doing it for 30 years now and uh, mm-hmm. you know <laughs> just leave leave that bit to me it's fine that's why you hired me yeah you know and um yeah it, it does feel a bit like well, hang on what are you even saying i mean because there's not much much information that they can really give you apart from the script of course which they tend not to give you anymore you know <laughs> do you know what i mean so it's yeah. it's sort of i don't know it's this weird always a kind of weird dance i i just wish they'd give you the script you know because i i got given the script recently on something and um i was amazed by how much information was in the script you know and mm. you know whereas usually now i don't give i, I don't get given the script you know. No, it's true. You can infer a lot from it. And it's almost like, depending on who gives you the job or who it's coming from, it's kind mm. of almost like, I, I feel like they feel like they've done their bit of the script and they feel like they understand it sufficiently to pass off the bits they think you need to know. And you kind of go, well, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because the shame of it might be that you might read it and pick up on all this stuff that they even realized. And then they're going to feel bad for not spotting it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just little clues or, yeah. or you kind of couch it in the narrative of the thing. You go, oh, this, or because of this, I think we need to emphasize this part of it because if we do that, it'll have more effect overall. And, you know, if that wasn't your instruction, then it's kind of, I don't know, somebody might feel bad for not having been the one to have spotted that. Well, there's a lot um, of that, isn't there? There's a, <laughs> there's, a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of feeling bad because you weren't the one to spot it or rather you weren't the one to blame, you know, if you're not, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, it's really weird, isn't it? Yeah. Got, it's, it's so, it's odd because I guess if you're like me, you just, I, I, I love the things in there are certain things that I, I recognize got me interested in this sort of thing. Yeah. And then you end up going down a sort of cul-de-sac, of, but this is how stuff is made and you have to just suck it up. But it feels like there are certain things like we, we had a chat the other day about this and I, there was, you know, that, that, that really wicked little short movie about when the lights go off or something. And mm. it's like this, when this lady switches the light off, you know, and there's a creature there and when she switches it on, the creature disappears. You know what I mean? It's just like a, it was like a two minute show. Yeah, it was really cool. It, yeah. And then, and then someone tried to turn that into like a big movie, mm. uh, as my understanding. I haven't seen it, but I might be wrong in this. But someone tried to turn it to a, you know, like a feature, and it just doesn't work because you're trying to string out something that was already a complete work. Yeah, just I mean, it, 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 it may work, but I think you know, old curmudgeons like us are, are just going to go, no, it doesn't work. You know, even though, even though, as you said, you haven't seen the film, and I haven't seen the film either, but I'm kind of. I, I have seen. This. I'm inclined. No, 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 no. But that's what I mean. It's that you're yeah. kind of fighting that as well because you know, like it, it may work. You know, I mean, the thing is, those, 
that those ideas for, for kids might be amazing ideas, you know, mm. but to us, mm. they are, I mean, I completely agree with you. I don't want to see a film like that. I mean, the thing is, I don't yeah. want to see any short horror film like that. Or, you, you know, I'm like, m- most horror films to me aren't that interesting anymore. So, no. so when I see a good idea like that, I'm like, oh, well, that's the idea. You know, I know the idea and I don't, I don't really need to see the film now because I kind of know what's going to happen. So, yeah, yeah, you know, very high concept and yeah, sort of um, full of itself. It's like a, I don't know. Well, yes, someone that's yeah. just graduated, you know, well, it's, full it's, of vim and vigor <laughs> without any real idea of what what lies ahead, really. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's never it, it's all it's high concept for for um uh you know for ultimately what is just going to be someone going ah! and jumping at you from out of the bed or yeah. out of the closet or whatever. It's just like where's the jump going to come from but there, there isn't yeah. high concepts in the term of in the even in the way of uh you, you know mary shelley's frankenstein or anything you know there's no there aren't i haven't seen that many new uh monsters you know like no just in terms of like they have lore attached to them and they mean something and they're interesting you, yeah. you know you actually kind of want to find out about the monster a bit more like like you did in alien or or the thing or something you know you're you know monsters now aren't you know i think i'm saying to you the other day they're kind of like action figures now you know so mm-hmm. um yeah anyway anyway yeah. yeah no did you did you ever re- I, was, I always i keep asking people about this question because i've I suddenly discovered these again in my loft recently but mm. uh, there was a comic in the 80s called scream did you ever read it well i think we're about the same age yeah. so you would have been I think it came out about 84 yeah. and it ran for 15 issues and it was a horror comic and it was an English horror comic and it was, it didn't run for long. And then there was that big sort of printers editor strike that happened in Fleet Street and it all got messed up. And it was one of the comics I think that just fell by the wayside and a yeah, bunch of comics merged, you know, like Eagle and, and Victor merged. Anyway, I've got all the screams and they were full of these basically little anthology stories. And I remember as a kid thinking how cool it was. There was like a complete story. And a lot of it was just, it didn't explain, explain every little bit to you. So there was room for you to be able to stretch up and try and understand it. It wasn't spoon fed mm. sort of in fact. And it was really nice. And I remember things like that and like tell something unexpected, although that doesn't really stand to scrutiny now when you watch them now. <laughs> it's just, no, it doesn't and it? you get some of it. With, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah. have you seen like inside number nine? Yeah. And, yeah you know, stuff brilliant. like that. Yeah. And I think, you know, they've got that kind of thing and I love that sort of risk taking and some of it doesn't take itself too seriously, but it's almost like there's lots of them. So you kind of burn through these things quickly. The iterations are quicker rather than these massive high end, you know, huge jobs that are either massive, massive errors. I'm not quite sure where I'm going with this, but I just, uh, I think I just, I don't, I don't see that kind of thing happening a lot i see like you say these big movies where there's a lot of seriousness about them all and they end up just being about some bloke going Bruh! and then you know that's yeah that's basically it <laughs> well i like i like very i like short form things a lot you know that's one of the things like, well, i went to see that that from the lighthouse you know have you seen that mm-hmm. um no but i think i saw is it on netflix it might be now i did see an advert for it on amazon yesterday so I, I, I saw it. I saw it in the cinema, you know, and it's very good, you know. And, and William Defoe like, acts it up a storm, you know. He's very funny, and Robert Pattinson's very good, and like, they're all kind of, you know, there's two people trapped in a lighthouse, and they're kind of old pirates, and they're just going, ah, you know. And it's all really, <laughs> it's it's you know, it's a lot of fun. But I I came out of it going like, well, yeah, that was really good, but it it, it wasn't as good as the best like um, Inside Number Nine episode you know or like or league of gentlemen you know and it's it's very similar to that you know and um oh cool and if, if you go back to those i mean i guess it's roald dahl or people like just spitting those stories out almost weekly you know there's so many of those those things like rod serling or roald dahl you know they were, those were all written in the 50s you know mm-hmm. or um even going back to conan doyle or um hg wells you know they were all writing for periodicals you know, or, or Charles Dickens. So you'd have you'd have uh, incredible writers who would often, you know, they'd have these write these short stories or whatever, or these these long stories in short form. And at the end of every week, it would always end with like, and he opened the door, and what did he see? You know, and it would be, and then he'd have to wait the next week for the end of the story. But there's there's like a brevity to that writing that I think is really good and. 
And often, mm. you know, with Dickens or any of those that lot, you would see an incredible sentence, you know, and then a, a page of shit, you know, you know, do you know what I mean? Because they had just had to, <laughs> they had to make up the word count. But at the, at the right. same time, the, the stories never stop moving, you know, and yeah, and I think now that a lot of stories have stopped moving. You know, when you see a, a, a feature film, often now they're very just. You're just like, oh god, especially a horror film. You know, they just they don't have anything to do apart from kill the characters. You know, so yes, you get the central idea out of the way, and then they just come and kill the characters, and it's it's a bit. It's kind of a bit. You realise that horror probably shouldn't ever be over ninety minutes. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. And there's there's precious few it feels that can do that because, it, like you say, it's almost like they spunked all their energy on making the monsters, and the, the, yeah. it doesn't seem like there's anything left for the story. <laughs> I mean, there there are certain things that I really enjoyed. Dust till dawn as a story because it started as yeah. a road movie, and then it was a bit of a you know sort of Quentin Tarantino esque, and you know I kind of liked that and. Um, the campness of the original Evil Dead movies as well. I, mean, I love I really those, yeah. Movies, but, yeah. Um, but then it's also, also like, then the, out of the seeds of that grow these sort of like uh, po-faced kind of like serious things, but they don't actually bring anything new to the party. They were just clearly inspired by, but they didn't, they didn't grow anything new from it. It just feels... No, it's no, it's kind of like that serious is real. That, that's what I don't like about the modern horror films. It's like the... In in the if you look back at Dawn of the Dead, you know Dawn of the Dead is the Romero version is totally serious, um, mm. but it's got jokes in it. You know, like you know, it's got the the rednecks kind of hunting the you know the zombies, and it's it it doesn't take it actually takes itself seriously in that it's got humor in it. Whereas I mm. I feel when I watch um, you know the walking dead or something like that it's really trying to be serious so the same with game of thrones it's really trying to sorry i know that you work on that <laughs> but it's it's um, no no not at all i'm not emotionally invested no, no. i don't even watch it but, to be um, honest. i mean i tried but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's just i couldn't get past the dragons i'm like no this is no. <laughs> yeah i mean I, I need something to be a bit light light-hearted just to for it to feel real to me what when people try and do it seriously and they really talk about things seriously I, I find it comes across as funny because it, do you, do you know what I mean? Because of the opposite yeah. reason. It's the, you know, if, if that was me and my friends doing it, you know, in real life, we wouldn't be taking it seriously. We would, we'd be panicking and all sorts of weird things would happen. And and that's what you see in, in the original Dawn of the Dead and Night of the Living Dead is that Night of the Living Dead, especially, is, isn't people like handling a situation. It's people panicking, going like, oh, my God. You know, like, and then they're all dead, you know, and, um, and, you know, whereas now everyone's like so capable, you know, they're, they're everyone's, yeah. and it's, it's like, I don't, you know, seeing people being capable isn't really that. I don't, I, there's, there's something about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it feels like a, a vehicle to, to, to advance some kind of, uh, um, agenda as somebody gets empowered and overcomes. And it's like, no, this is not what this type of film should be. You know, we want to yeah. see you know, uh, something terrible happening, not not someone, I don't know, oh, this is why they were so doing many chin-ups in the gym, I get it now, or whatever. It's just like, oh, here we go. Um, <laughs> yeah. I wonder if, how you feel about the, um, touching a, a little bit on digital, and the reason I, I, I'm, I'm hung up on the digital side of things, mm. I think, is because it can permit somebody with some skills to do more than they would otherwise like for mm. example there's something to be said for a makeup where uh, a, a, a skillful makeup will incorporate you know the person's face so you will use that character and that person as part of the makeup do you know what I mean so you work in sympathy with what you've got rather than just you know enforcing your creation on a face that doesn't necessarily suit it yeah and it's something to be said for you know you get stuff for free don't you because of how the person behaves or their acts or their character and how things come out when you create something digitally because I, I was thinking like watching the extras on cars and that kind of stuff mm. um you know they were talking about how you don't get anything for free digitally you have to you know you have to construct everything so somewhere between the two worlds where there are realistic elements enhanced with digital or some things that are just completely impractical to make digitally because it's like i need a warehouse we don't have a warehouse but we can make one do you know what i mean so mm. we can pop one in there so it feels like what what the creative industry there's, there's two things there's the they're doing it for fun and there's getting paid to do it and it feels like the worker bee mentality of just being really skilled at one thing 
just means you end up being like a kind of a, a unit passed around from to, to job to job. Whereas it feels like we should be doing stuff like like you were saying, whether you might write something or you, you, you are responsible for more than just the rubber nose because you can now. Yeah. It's not good enough just to be able to do that one thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's an interesting sort of dilemma. It, it's, I mean, it's, it's uh, the basic, you know, conflict is between the old and the new. And, you know, when you use digital things, part of you goes like, oh, my God, this is amazing. You know, I've suddenly got superpowers, you know. Uh, and then there's another part of you that's learning to use the program that you're literally crying because you can't use it, you know. And you're like, you're like, why can't I use this? A 12-year-old can use this. So you, you sort of, you can see these superpowers within reach, you know, when you're doing using these programs but then you're simultaneously like embarrassed that you can't use the program yet and that a 12 year old can use the program better than you and so you sort of hate them because you're like well they've suddenly been given the superpower and they can just learn how to do you know 30 odd years of work and you know very very quickly and now everyone can do this sort of thing and then mm. and then part of you is going like well actually but no one is you know and everyone is kind of still waiting for the old guard to die off, you know, and, 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 and then you realize that no, that old guards don't really die off and that, you know, we've still got painting and we've still got mosaics and circus and all these things that have been around for hundreds of years and they don't actually go away, you know? And mm -hmm. so it's a bit of an interesting, I mean, it's a bit, it's a total head fuck. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you know, it's, um, yeah, it's like, um, we we are my thing is is that we are at we are at now at the position where someone can make a film as easily as they could write a book Pre pretty much you know um and that we sh we should all you know if our job is to scare people then that's our job it's not to just scare people through makeup or whatever it should be to utilize editing or digital work or whatever it is to to scare people and we can all now kind of come up with own, our own stories and write our own um, little sketches or do our short films or longer forms or whatever. Um, but we've, we, we're fighting this old guard that is basically still saying, no, 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 I have to, and we, Hollywood is a thing and I, I have to employ my friends and my family and all their friends and their family, you know, do you know what I mean? And it's that kind mm -hmm. of industry isn't going to go away soon because what happens is that you know when you come up against these people and go look i can do all this for free or for nothing or like save you all this money they're actually not that interested you know they're they're much more interested in in just doing the the deals that they did yesterday yeah. and earning that, that amount of money yesterday because anything that's new is even if it's been established like you know just people doing stuff off their top you know they they really don't like people doing that in a in a sort of unionized environment because it's 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 you know inherently it's anti-union you know what i mean it would break yeah. Yeah. they would just break everything up so um i, I mean i i really think that we should it, it, what i would like to see are just films being made by independent people who could actually earn a living off that you know um that's the hard thing isn't it as soon as the yeah, the, the, yeah. The, 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 the money element comes in then suddenly you have to play the game yeah, and that, yeah. in a weird way, can completely fuck up what could otherwise be a really, really good thing. But yeah, yeah, I know that's a very <laughs> simplistic. Yeah. It's a very simplistic way of looking at it. I'm not. I'm not saying that every independently made movie is brilliant. And I'm not saying that every every Hollywood movie, for want of a better word, you know, is 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 shite because that's not the tr not the case at all. Yeah. But you're right. It's like you could be incredibly capable, and you could say, "Oh, fuck it, I'm really upset with the latest." Um, Marvel movie. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to show that every, I'm going to show them all by doing my own little insert the the cut scenes that would have made it a better movie. I'm going to make myself, and you go away for a year and you do it, and it's great. Yeah. But Mar Marvel are not going to knock on your door and say, "Oh man, where have you been? Come on in, you know, and haul you up to the next level." That's no. not going to happen. <laughs> no, like, there are very few. <laughs> there are very few people who do that. You know, there are there are filmmakers who do that. You know, and and I mean, I have to say, Ridley Scott is one of them. You know, he, hmm. he, th that's kind of how I got hired on his film. You know, he literally just hires the people. He's like, I like that advert. Who did that? You know, I like that bit of effects. Who did that? 
And he always mm. gives the people their first shot, you know, and then if they don't want to do it, he'll get someone to rip them off, you know, which is, but that's, but I think that's fair enough. I think that's a really good way of working, you know, um, yeah. but it, but most big companies don't, they, they will just go, Oh, that's the, that's YouTube. You know, that's, you know, that's just something to take from YouTube and they will just yeah. take that. And, and, and ultimately that's, it's kind of, that's almost what you're fighting. You're fighting like, well, if I stand my ground, I can make this short film, um, and do it on my own. But at the same time, if, if I do stand my ground, the, the chances of it being ripped off and, a big company just taking the idea and you know, well, yeah. are, they're pretty high in a, you know, yes, they I are, mean the same, the, yeah, the, the same budget that you don't have to produce a big movie is the same budget that will prevent you from protecting your IP. Yeah. And yeah. The, and the, and the danger is of course, if you do a great job by yourself, I go, well, if that guy can do it with his minimal resources, we can easily improve on that. Yeah. So it won't necessarily serve to inspire anybody above you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is it, sick, isn't it? Yeah, the, <laughs> but the, the, yeah. There is a there is a sort of imaginary boundary there, though, which is it's a weird one because it's basically the suits. You know, it's like yeah. it, if you can get your stuff into a low budget film, it will then make it into the film. But if if you can get something that's highly original into a big budget film, or at least if you're on the crew of a big budget film, like. The chances of it actually making to to the screen are very very slim, uh, and the reason for that is I think of the suits, you know, who are, they just come along and they'll just arm and err it to death, you know. They're, they're, mm. It's it's not even a case of that, that it's malicious. It's just a case of as you know that they'll just someone will someone will go like, oh, I'm not sure about that, and as soon as someone said, oh, I'm not sure about that, that's you know one black mark. That's it, and, spoiled. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. And then it just goes down. And if it, if you get two or three people going, oh, I'm not sure about that, then the the idea is out of the window. So the the chances, everything gets rounded off at the top level. So the chances of you bumping into like, you know, someone like you know, like Christopher Nolan, for example, who might actually put an idea that no one has seen before on the screen, you know? Um, and I'm not sure if he has, he probably he hasn't, you know, but he's at least a little bit cutting edge, you know? So, um, you know, they're pretty slim, those, those chances, I think, you know? Yeah. Um, it's a tough one. It is. It's, how do you get around? I take the gamble, you know? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah but it also it also feels like your motivation for doing it should be because you've got something you want to make rather than because you're sucking it up for a future benefit there needs to be like an ongoing yeah. reason to do it do you know what i mean it's almost like yeah i, I think that's the, yeah. that's th that that's definitely the case for most of the people i know that work you know in workshops if they're if they're not working they're still sculpting for fun because there's something intrinsically valuable in being able to do it um, yeah, and sometimes yeah. the benefits are not obvious. Like I don't know, like you could run a marathon. You don't need to run a marathon because we have cars, we have planes. You know, no one needs to physically be able to transport their body hundreds of miles. But that does mean when you meet an ultra marathon runner, you're like, "Fuck, this is a rare thing." But you know, so there's, there's yeah. a benefit in it. But but yeah. not everyone can run a hundred miles <laughs> or wants to no, go through the pain no, of two you, years you of training to, to be pick. able to. No, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you have to just create the thing and see where it goes. I, I think that the, yeah, I, you know, just save the ideas up and like, you know, I've got things that have been sitting there for 10 or 20 years, you know, and I, I recently wrote something that included the, the pretty much the first idea I ever had, you know, and it was from oh, wow. 30 years ago. So I managed to incorporate something I wrote 30 years ago into something I wrote last week, which is, you know, at least you know, but the thing that you wrote 30 years ago, you're like, well, the benefit of that is at least that, you know, that you as a, like a teenager, you like that, you know? Yeah. Whereas, yeah. whereas when you're older, you're like, I don't know what I liked, you know, you can't remember, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, yeah, so you're like, yeah. well, at least I've got some stash of ideas of monsters that I might not like now, but I know that teenagers like, you know, so yeah, you know what I mean? It, that it's good to have things from the past that you can pull on and, and never let anything think that it's dead. You know, it's sort of, yeah. things always come up. They always, ideas always kind of boil up. So it's, I think it's really that, that that's kind of what you're getting at. It's there's, there's such a place for every idea now, you know, whether it's a sketch or a sculpt or, you know, a bit of music or, whatever mm. that you, you you can pretty much just put it down on the internet and it's sort of like 
you know, it's, it's the butterfly effect, isn't it? It's like, do, does it ripple or doesn't it, you know? Yeah. And having <clears> ideas <throat> is one of those things where you, you can have a good idea, but the, there's also a danger of like other, if you have an, if you have ideas that you don't then work on and do something with, mm. you could also believe that you're this fountain of good ideas, but until you actually sort of render something with it, yeah do you know what i mean you can you can have lots of ideas but if it takes you a year to produce a piece of work based on that idea that's why filmmaking is so slow isn't it it's just you know it's just such a big machine it's almost like a drawing or a painting or a short animation or something can be just as valid because you haven't had to go through so you don't need so many links in the chain to make it happen but no but yeah but also you see your ideas being made by other people you know which is yes which is is great and it's sort of like you know, it's like, you know, when I was a kid, I kind of wanted to make like everyone make it like a sequel to Aliens or something, you know. So, mm-hmm. you know, you're like, oh, new James Cameron movies. But and now you see all the results of that. You see all these people who wanted to make James Cameron movies and like you see how hard it actually was, you know, and and um, and how there's lots of James Cameron copies, you know, and that type of action movie. But very few people have managed to make another one any good you know there's only a, yeah. a couple that are any good so but you know you see um like there's that guy uh like ari Aster, you know you know he did hereditary and um um have you seen that um midsummer have you seen midsummer no I, i've got to see midsummer yet but i've heard good things it looks quite quite kind of moody and, and you know high concept but not not too wanky <laughs> no it's not it's quite wanky. Trailer, it's quite like I, I i wasn't like a massive fan of hereditary but midsummer i loved you know and i'm like it's a it's almost kind of like a comedy it's it's like uh it's like the shining or something like that it's a sort of piss take of horror films almost and um i i thought it was brilliant and i'm like oh thank god someone's making a film like this you know like i would have loved to have made that you know and mm. and i'm like at least if i'm not making some something like this someone else is i'm really happy when i see you know if you see someone who's making good films you, you know it's i think that that, that makes me really, really happy or if you see someone who's doing you know because i i mean i got out of the the effects industry um i mean i'm still in the effects industry you know what i mean i kind of dabble around it but i've been i've been trying to make feature films that's basically what i've been trying to do which is very hard and so mm-hmm. You know, but it, when I, I look back in the effects industry and it's it's there's so many like sculpts now and bits of work that I see every single day that I it, it makes me want to just do it full time again. You know, the effect, you know, effects because they're they're so amazing. Yeah. You know, I just want to kind of compete in that arena again. You know, so um, yeah, it's a tough one where, where to put yourself. I was going to ask you about that, about how you see, mm. like, you know, you'll see, I guess, because of the way we can transmit ideas and, you know, Facebook and social media, so yeah. everyone can see things that they're doing. But it just feels like you go into Zebra Central and you'll see so many amazing sculpts done. It's sickening. I mean, like, I bet, I bet <laughs> half of these people are not even doing this for a living. They're just, you know, middle managers in the week and then yeah. they, ju- they just happen to be really good sculptors. And it's, but it's not a zero sum game. So it doesn't mean that just because, you know, lots of people can sculpt well, that's, that's it. That's the pool of talent dried up. There's none left for you. It, you know what I mean? It's, so there's, there's plenty for everybody, but it, <laughs> yeah. but it almost feels it like, feels like I'm not special anymore because, you know, when I was interested in sculpting when I was 15, I didn't know anybody else. So it felt special. So yeah. now there's a part of me that's like, oh, fuck you all. <laughs> but, but at the yeah. same time, that's <laughs> magic because it also means that there's, there's so much out there that, that, that I can learn more too. It just, mm. it just kind of feels like in a way that it's not as sort of like, like, like what's special now? Everything is, you can, you can think of the most obscure thing and you'll find, you know, a community of people also doing it. And, but that, that, I guess that comes from just a kind of an egotistical, oh, me, me, me kind of thing. And to see somebody else doing either the same thing that you thought was yours or is special, that's just tough shit. And that can also be yeah. equally as lovely because it's like, oh, wow. You know what I mean? There's more for me to find out. There's still more things to learn. Well, it was like, I was thinking, yeah. you know, like Duncan goes mudlarking, you know, um, mm-hmm. you know, on the beach or whatever, like you go beach. Yeah. On the Thames. Yeah. Scene, all these going, amazing little things. Yeah. Beach combing and you pull out, you know, a medal or a bullet or, or whatever, you know, and you're like, well, that, that's where you get that feeling from, you know, cause <laughs> you're, you're never going to mm. get it from the internet. Are you? 
you know like no, no. you know like no you're th- right that it's, feeling yeah. of like the mr james thing of like oh, i found this special thing that has a history to it and is amazing and you know like you don't get i mean on you know i still order books on the internet you know so i can flick through them and and get that but the feeling of the feeling of flicking through on the internet is just it's simultaneously one of like sort of jealousy and amazement and then like oh, i'm oh fuck that i'm never gonna even see that again you know it's mm, like mm. but so, to have that bundled up into one thing you know and you're like you're quite happy just to put it in a folder and never really see it again it's, it's really weird because as you know like you people like you and me grew up like looking over one page on Cinefix for like a day, you know, like, look, you know mm. what I mean? Like looking at that mm. picture of Rick Baker with his troll, you know, with a magnifying glass, you know, going, how, yeah. how did he do that? You know, I like, you know, and, and I can't imagine anyone doing that now. Um, I know what you mean. Yeah. It's like what, what actually is special now? Because mm. there's an abundance of so many things. It's kind of like, I was thinking about this recently about movies where I, I remember seeing, I think Jurassic Park and T2 are two very good examples where I remember seeing staring at the cinema screen. I think they were both around 1992-ish. Yeah. And I remember both looking at the screen and going, holy shit, how the fuck did they do that? And now you just go, there's a computer in it. Do you know what I mean? So it's almost like the the wonder has gone from a lot of things because partly because there's a lot of amazing things in the one, but it hasn't imbued that sort of um, the rareness to it and that, but like you say, when you pick, when you dig something out of the ground, when it's something that you do, and it's the, uh, it's the result of effort, and you've probably spent a lot of time digging and not finding anything, that it's that sort of significance arises out of that complete thing, and you can't fabricate that. You still have to put the hours in, and you still have to do something that requires effort and isn't easy, and it isn't abundant in a weird kind of way. And you may have mm. to use an easily, easily searchable, abundant source like the internet to find that. <laughs> well totally you know, you know, no no totally but i mean this i think i was saying the other day there's that artist uh, people you know he does mashups of you know he'll he'll take some either some assets or pre-rendered scenes and sort of mash them together and and then add his own stuff and i mean I, i'm not exactly sure how he does that um but he'll do one of them a day and they're like high quality renders and they're usually kind of funny and not political little satire things yeah. that are often Trump and King Jong Un. Yeah, you know, yeah, like Disney and all sorts of weird. Yeah, exactly. And they're brilliant sort of mashups. And and you're like, well, that's. I think that's the modern. That's like a modern collage, isn't it? So yes, you know yes. that's and but that's someone really being on the cutting edge and utilizing all the effort that you would think. How the hell does one man do this? Whereas in fact, yeah, yeah. you can. That's what you can do now. You know, you can. Yes. You can you know we wouldn't want everyone doing it because it would be that would be hellish you know it'd be because it you know it'd be, people is sort of nightmarish you know if everyone was kind of splurging their id all over the you know the internet the whole time it would be yeah. they would probably be too much you know but yeah but it can happen quickly and it it's can, the sort of thing yeah. it's the reason it's the reason why something like if you brought back spitting image it probably wouldn't go down as well mm. because and I know they've tried a couple of times, haven't they, with the digital version, and it's just it just mm. doesn't land in the same way because people won't wait a week for the for the commentary. No, you know? it'd have to and be even that was that was yeah. you know that 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 that's that's quite a turnaround to be able to sculpt something, knock it up in foam, you know, puppeteer it, act it, get it edited, and you know on you know in a pre-internet era, yeah, you know, within a week is pretty fucking good. But if you give it a week, then that that political outrage has passed, and we're we're not. No one, no one gives a fuck about Jacob Rees Mogg napping in the Commons anymore. You know, I mean, who else no. was? Because we're we're too busy shouting at Dominic Cummings for yeah, no. being the twat. So, <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So the, it's coming thick and fast. So, what, what's this news? Dominic Cummings is a twat. Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But there'll be something. Yeah. I know there'll be something equally hideous in the next seven days. It will make that pale into zero. Yeah. So, but then, I mean, you know, there's no point. But then again, you've got like South Park's made like that, isn't it? South Park's made it yes. in seven days. And um, yeah, yeah. I I guess that's the natural natural successor successor <laughs> sorry my mouth isn't working um to um uh yeah to spitting image you know yeah um because i mean on, and as you said youtube in general you know that it's podcasting and um you know just people kind of shouting their opinions out but i do i do miss like one voice i love spitting image 
growing up. So yeah. I, I do yeah. miss that. That's kind of what I like. I, you know, I was watching Have I Got News For You the other day, you know, in in lockdown. And that was it's a similar thing. I, I like I kind of like these people telling me yes. telling me what the news is, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and superior minds. I mean, so, someone like Paul Merton is, you know, rapid fire. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's funny because he, he, he works off of, you know, his polar opposite in um, Ian Hislop, you know. <laughs> so it's that kind of friction between those two kind of things, which is quite funny. And it needs that. Uh, th- but they're the yeah. same adversaries every time as well, which is quite nice. But you can't, you can't move because you're paranoid about upsetting somebody. Well, no, exactly. But it, but it's that thing of like, I, you just want the filter to be, it, it can be anything, but it, you just need to know what the filter is, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. Uh, you know just it to be silly like so spitting image you knew that they were just going to tear someone a new asshole every week you know and that's yeah that's kind of all you want you know i i I think from satire you just want them to be kind of rabid and merciless with it yes well did you ever watch i mean a slight aside i mean not a lot of people i probably won't even put this in but do you remember uh there was an episode and there was someone from big brother i can't think who it was who was you know basically um uh, speeded up to be a celebrity because of it but they were clearly an idiot yeah brian i think his name was brian something and he was on uh eight out of ten cats Mm. and there was something that he said that was just clearly so stupid and it was just like you say it was just merciless and it was like phil jupiter's and do you know what i mean just people were very quick-witted and it's like it was just (laughs) it was beautiful (laughs) and it was just like watching a school bully getting beaten shitless it was like part of you was like this is horrible but at the same time i can't stop watching yeah um it was the, you need yeah that. no totally <laughs> perhaps that's a very english thing i don't know oh no it's it's totally english i mean they're sort of getting it in america now aren't they they're like but that, that's been around for ever you know yeah they oh, they say like no one makes sort of angry young man films better than the english you know and i <laughs> yeah do you know what i mean just people being pissed off like Ugh. It's like, you know, winning here isn't really the same as it is in America, is it? You know, no, like, no, no. Champion the underdog. Yeah, it's true. And I look back at all the things I like, like Blackadder and stuff like that. It's just like, it's the fact that he's ineffectual and, and incredibly, you know, the angry with a wide vocabulary goes a long way. Um, I don't want him to win because then he'll stop being funny. <laughs> so, yeah, he's surrounded by idiots. It's like you're raging against the machine. You're just like, why isn't anyone listening to me? I'm the clever one, you know, and you're like, yeah, yeah. and everyone's just going, oh, shut up. You know, I mean, it's that oh. thing in England. It's sort of winning is worse than, worse than losing. Um, yeah, you know? it's a weird one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And that's that's quite a unique cultural difference, I think, over here. You know what I mean? That, yeah. that thing of like, and it'll probably be quite, odd i think I, depending on where you've lived in other countries to sort of spot this but like i guess like in america someone sees a big car and you might think oh wow that's amazing you know look what they managed to acquire and you see a big car in england so i wonder where he, he fucked over to get that do you know what i mean it's yeah. a, as brutal as that that's that that is the difference sometimes yeah but I, even kind of on a smaller level it's just like even just winning something it's just you know that people will be grumbling about you you know mm. do you know what i mean like you know, it's this, it's this thing of being having to be simultaneously like happy for your friends and also wanting to stab them in the back. You know, yeah, it's like, you know, like, I think it was here, <laughs> Armando Anucci said this. He said there are two things in life that make you happy. One is seeing your friends fail, you know, and the other is <laughs> and the other is tearing uh, the, the sleeve off a CD, you know, on, you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, but it's true. I mean, you know, whenever my friends succeed, it's always just like, oh, you bastard. But I'm I'm genuinely happy for them. I, You know, it's both sides work for me. You know, I'm like, I, I always think, um, you know, you you use the, um, you go like, oh, you bastard. And you just go, I'll, I'll beat you at something at some point, you know. And, um, mm-hmm. and the other part of you is just genuinely happy for them going, oh, that must be brilliant. And then thinking... Well, you're English, so it's not that brilliant, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You'll fuck it up. You'll fuck it up, yeah. Uh, but I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, but I also I, I look. At, it's like whenever I look at America, I'm like, are you really happy that you won? Are you <laughs> because like I can't, you know? It's like I don't know. Maybe this I'm just being too negative. This feels like we, it's a Sunday morning, even though it's not. Um, yeah. 
that kind of thing. Anyway, yeah. I'll, I'll leave that. That I just was just, just indulging in a little bit. It's, you know what it's like. I, I haven't been out much to be honest well, with you, man. I. And it's just nice to talk to somebody <laughs> else that that remembers spitting image and blackadder in the same way. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I'll talk a little bit about if if you can about your process, if you don't mind, about with regards to digital stuff. Oh, yeah. You you you've been using it for a long time. Are you somebody that? That was, did you, did you seek it out or did you like, would you just hanging out with people that used it or how did you start using like Photoshop and, or was it just a logical thing for you to use? I'm guessing yeah. you started with Photoshop. No, I've, I've first... always had a computer. Um, right. I pretty much always had a computer from like when, you know, when I was at school, we had computers and um, I was, I think one of the only kids that I was one of three kids that took the computer course at, my school uh because Do you i remember realized what computers they were were they like the rm yeah. machines the no Marvel they Queens? were like no they they had like a pet at school like a commodore pet that was the first one and then they had like bbc micro and then they had an archimedes and um i learned i i learned basic on a bbc micro and uh, also on a commodore 64 i had a commodore 64 at home which i used to play video games on um uh, and then I had an Amiga, uh, and there are various, like, you know, sort of how to make your own uh, computer graphics programs on the Amiga, um, mm -hmm. where, like, Deluxe Paint, where you could paint, and then there was, so was 3D Max on that? I can't remember, but it was a 3D program, which would just torture you, you know. And, yeah, they're horrible. So, like, <laughs> every... Every computer I've ever used, I've always tried to get into like the the coding side of it, or the or the you know like HTML. You'd write your own website or something, which is something I did um, back in the day. And um, uh, and then with movie making, I got into that in the I think in the mid '90s with the Adobe Premiere Suite. You know, I got into it through Premiere and then through uh, using after effects and uh, and photoshop um so it's always it's always been there to be honest you know computers it's never been too, it's too much of a bother for me yeah that's good i mean yeah. i think that's the thing that, that, that is noticeable in your work is that they integrate well you know you'll use practical and digital stuff well, the right way because it doesn't feel like either of them you know I'm trying to think of a good example. I remember, <laughs> remember being on the first Mummy movie mm. um, on set, and there was a thing where they were going to put gloves on, and I think Stephen Summers was like, "Oh, don't worry, we'll just do it afterwards." Like he he already knew he was going to fuck with this so much digitally that yeah, it it was like it it was like what 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 I remember looking around going, "What the fuck are we doing?" Here? You know what I mean, it's just basically lighting reference is what we're supplying. It felt like, <laughs> yeah. And then the yeah. ultimate thing, you kind of see that. I remember distinctly that, and I I, I am excited about the the idea where where somebody's trying to create something with a complete vision, and they're not just kind of pinching one bit there and put that. Do you know, it's yeah. almost like a coherent view. And I guess in I guess what I'm trying to say is I think. There needs to be a world where people just use whatever is right, you know, both themselves. But that's kind of hard on a big movie because you will have your digital yeah. department and you have your practical department. But it just, I, I just kind of want myself included to be able to do something cool that involves both. And I think I'm trying to unpick where that comes from. And I think ultimately it's from, like you say, this, this familiarity that stops it being an issue. So it's not a thing. Yeah, you have it's to go like away and the, learn. No, no. I mean, it's a it is a weird one, but ultimately, like the people with the least experience might be the best at it. You know, like mm. you know, if you're on set and you see a guy going, "Ah, oh, shoot it in post," and you go, oh, "They're always saying that." You know, like you know, why do they always say have some pipeline or whatever where they don't just say, oh, "We'll do it in post," and everything gets swept away? Like ultimately, that is the best way of doing it you know unfortunately because from if you're in you know if you're in production and direction and you go like okay let's set something up then then you have to contend with a whole bunch of people coming in with you know light meter readings and lasers and all that crap you know what i mean mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. well it's ultimately you don't actually need that you know like like i mean for example i've been shooting a black screen for the last what 10 years i think 
I, 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 I started using green screen and I was like, this is awful. You know, like you, using green screens is, is, uh, you know, you get so much light spill on your subjects, you know, and, and you're basically trying to contend with that. The, now with digital, like using a black screen is, is better, you know, um, mm. and you require less lighting. You just have a black background, you know, because you can key off black. In a lot of cases, you can key off black against pr- pretty much anything because it's just the darkest color. So, yeah, you know, so, you know, that's well, just for That's just an example of like you could just save a lot of money if you know what you're doing there or or yeah because if you light it right then you can pick out the shape yeah i can't think what the name is the fill light you might have at the back or something or a key light at the back yeah i mean to kind of pick up that yeah that's a really interesting point yeah and yeah uh, but see now what 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 interests me about that is that you are not bogged down with 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 like dogma where it's like well it has to be a green screen because you've looked at it and gone well i've done the green screen thing I can see problems with this. How can I get around it? Yeah. And you're not sort of hampered with that kind of, yeah, but green screen is what we do. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, how else can I do it? This solves the problem. So I'll do that. Well, totally. And yeah. It, 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 I, it, to me, it's all about the problem solving. You know, that's what, that's what I'm interested in mainly. You know, it's not like the, it, it's mainly like, because I'm, I'm the, the problem that I'm obsessed with at the moment is just how, how to, you know, because everyone's talking about CG this and CG that. And, um, you know, I'm like, I, I want to see a reliable way of doing like uh, cars driving, you know, because like every time you see an in, in interior car, you, you can tell that it's fake outside, you know, and you're like, well, what hope have we got to make a CG human if we can't do that yet? You know, like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, that, surely we should be doing because there's so so few films that i see where i'm like is that real you know and i'm like I, it could be real you know most of the time it's either night or day where it's it's fake you know so to mm. to solve that problem of just an interior car i mean i think you could set up your own studio do, doing that and make a ton of money if you could get it absolutely down you know um yeah um but but then you've got this you know, if you're, it, it's, as you say, you've got to be on set. And if you know the lingo, you can call bullshit on probably 90% of what's going on on a film set. You know, mm, you know, mm. I think David Fincher said that he said he, he trained as a director, not to just to stop people, you know, just throwing bullshit at him every day, you know, just because he says that that's mostly what most departments do. It's just to come come up with excuses to keep the director at bay, you know. <laughs> it's true. It's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas it if is, it's yeah. your movie, then you're invested in it. That's why I kind of think it's uh, there's something to be said for everyone sort of making their own work yeah. to some degree, because then you really gain gain an appreciation of 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 what that means. But not everyone can write stories, I suppose. But I guess I don't know. I'm, this is like therapy for my own head in a way. I'm just trying <laughs> to figure out where I fit in all of this and I just put it down on a microphone for other people to sort of cry at. But, well I know how you feel. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. weird one. Because I kind of look around and go, oh this stuff I want to do, but I don't really know what I want to do. Cause like I did um I did one day on on um it was it was um it was like a photo shoot for one of the Star Wars movies. I can't remember which one it was. Mm. Which is the one with the with the the casino scene and all these horsey things running through the casino, knocking shit everywhere, it was that was that solo, I think. And and I, you know, it was a, it was a photo shoot day, and it was amazing to just be there for one day, just to kind of see that. Um, but I didn't feel like there. It was weird. I wasn't the same kid that I would have been like twenty years ago, where I was just like imploded with ecstasy about just the fact that, that you know mm. here was this going on it was cool but i kind of felt like there's so many hands involved in this there's so much involved in it it's kind of like i don't it it it, it kind of didn't matter and yet i'll watch something like inside number nine which would have made for a fraction of the budget with far fewer people but it felt like this this that's the real shit and i kind of I don't know if it's what a, it is. just an age, an age thing where I'm just like, oh, you know what I mean? I'm just like, I can't, <laughs> yeah. I'm not looking to these big things anymore to kind of float my boat. It's, uh, I, it, I don't it think it's much smaller. Yeah, mm. I, don't, I don't think it's that. It's, I, I think it's as simple as like you, you're not that interested in seeing stories told by film executives, you know? Like, yes. You know, like, Basically. you know, like <laughs> coined well, sir. Very good. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you're exactly just like right. people, it doesn't matter what excuses you mate you 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 come up with for like liking or disliking the film you're just like look you know 
Star Wars was, you know, kind of pretty much come up with by like a kind of car mechanic. You know, with 10 years ago, George Lucas was a car mechanic, you know. So, but like 30 years ago, you know, whoever wrote Star Wars wasn't a fucking car mechanic. They were a film executive. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, maybe Ryan Johnson, he was he was once, you know, did something. But like J.J. Abrams, the last, you know, he was, he's, he's been a film guy for 30 years, you know, and uh, and Kathleen Kennedy has been a film girl for 30 years. And, mm-hmm. you know, ultimately, they don't really have that many stories to tell. You know, their lives on they won't be able to remember what their lives were like before then. You know, yeah. and it's not their yeah. fault. It's just that that's the. It's like you need new stories, you know, you need stories by people who've worked on the ground and understand what people are going through. You can't have stories written by those people. I don't yeah. think I just I just don't think they'll connect with you. Whereas, you know, inside number nine, they connect with you because they're they You can tell they're written by two of them and they're mad, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know like, their feet are on the ground. Their feet are it's on the ground. It's interesting, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just about story. I think that's the thing. And I guess... I guess not everybody is capable of telling a story the way they think they should, but maybe they can tell a story in a, maybe it's just a comic book panel. Maybe it's a drawing, maybe it's a, mm. a diorama or whatever. It's just, it's, it's, it's weird, isn't it? It's kind of like, it's finding your voice. I thought that's such a wanky thing to say. But do you <laughs> know what I mean, just trying, yeah. trying to find something that, 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 that delivers what you're trying to say rather than feeling like because i can't work on that big movie therefore i cannot express myself because that's been denied me because yeah by its very nature not everyone that can sculpt is going to be making their daytime living being paid as a sculptor but that doesn't mean that they can't do it and that they shouldn't do it because there's definitely something valuable in there but it's just trying to find out what that is i think that's what i'm trying to get at. i'm trying to pick yeah up what it is that but it is it's what, but it's also in, like in the first star wars rick baker would make something and they'd go oh we need more of this because it's good you know as whereas mm-hmm. in this one they're not it's all kind of top down they're just like we need an alien here it's alien seven you know and it just needs to go in that corner you know and you're like ah this you you can tell that they don't want anything more of you you know what I mean? Whereas I'm not saying yeah. that doesn't happen because it definitely did happen on the new Star Wars films, you know, like they, they did see things that were good and, you know, make them better and, you know, and all of this, but you, d- I, I mean, I, I get a feeling watching those films that they, they, you know, they, I mean, I've, I've worked on them. So I know they, they, everything has to go by the director or the producer or the, or the producers, you know, and, and, yeah. And it's very, you do feel like, the way I've described it before is like, it's like catering, you know? So you're, you know, like your job is to bake the best cakes, but they might not get eaten, you know? But you've still got to, yeah, yeah. you've still got to build these cakes, you know, and bake these cakes. And at the end of the day, you just throw them in the bin, but you, you know that they were really good cakes. And they know they're really good cakes, and they probably wanted to eat some of them as well. <laughs> but, you know, they just, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, but there's there's such an abundance of good stuff and everyone has to maintain it and it becomes culturally like this sort of point of pride. Yeah, yeah. I mean what waste. <laughs> it is, it is. I mean, I'm really interested in the kind of in the, the paradigm, not to get too wanky about it and use the word paradigm, because I think you know, the um but the the paradigm of um if where you have something that's not very good or particularly good or average. I, I'd use the thing that everyone I, I love et right but loads yeah. of people hate et and but i'm like but when i watch et et is totally believable to me as a creature like in and it, in the film especially the way it works and i'm like okay so you've got this puppet that doesn't look very good when you put light on it so you have to light it kind of in the dark and you have to put the camera in a certain angle you know and you have to make it work and so you have Steven Spielberg and oh, I can't remember who shot that film, um, but the DOP and Henry Thomas, who's acting, and they've they've all got to really, really combine to bring it to life, you know. Whereas yeah. nowadays you don't, you don't have to bring it to life. The thing can always sing and dance at a hundred, you know, a hundred percent, and do all its stuff, and you know that it can do what it can do. And so you're not collaborating anymore and no one's collaborating. They're just kind of plonking it there and it does its thing. And then they, the other actor does their thing, you know? And, mm-hmm. and I think 
you know, I think when you get people working together, just it doesn't really matter what they're doing. But if you can see people bouncing off each other and feel it as well, that will make the end thing good. You know, um, yeah, it's like, do you watch um, Succession at all? Do you watch that show? No, but I'm writing that down. <laughs> OK, good. Explain what that is. Because Succession is I mean, it's by the guys who did uh, one of the guys who did Peep Show. And, you know, he wrote. Uh, the thick of it some of the thick of it and alan partridge and it's it's an american mm. show about uh, brian cox plays like so, a sort of robert maxwell uh, character you know and um it's okay. about an american media family and the, their family but the thing about it is the acting in it you can just tell that the actors hung out together and that they bounced off each other and you, you know that there's a real life to the the characters in that, that you don't really get beyond you know you don't usually get in a uh, even most tv dramas you know so mm -hmm. it's it's more that it's more like the subconscious stuff that's what i'm gonna i'm trying to get at you know i think we yes. we pick up on a lot of these things subconsciously and you know you can you could say to anyone oh et shit because it, the paint is crap on it and the you know the sculpting that's kind of missing the point it's missing it? it's the like, point yeah 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 it's like oh you know you love someone you love how they look and it's like yeah but they've got a mole on their cheek and that ruins it for me it's like oh fuck you and you're fucking <laughs> yeah. a, it's completely disparaging everything else because of that small thing and it's like that um, stupid mole yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Crazy. no exactly um, right very well put yeah well i hope you enjoyed that we both hope you enjoyed that uh let us know give us Shoot us some email at stuartandtodd at gmail.com or leave us a voice message on our website, battleswithbitsofrubber.com. You've got up to five minutes to just go on about something. It's not like we don't do that. And we'll talk to you all soon. Stay safe. Cheers, man. Cheers. You can get in touch through our Facebook page or email us at stuartandtodd at gmail.com. Check the show notes for more information. If you enjoyed this episode, tell someone else and help us grow by sharing it on social media. Thanks for listening.